Hello, dear friends. Here we are at Cardiac Radio in the Spirit of Sada, Virginia, with you in one more line gospel. Yes, it's that meeting that we used to have on Saturdays at the Spirit of Sada, Virginia, before we had to close it again because of the pandemic. And it's an opportunity that all of us have to have the center inside of our homes. Many people ask, why do I need to keep doing this? Well, right now, on earth, if we don't watch and pray big time, we'll be in trouble. That's what we're seeing everywhere. It's a big cleansing on the earth. Everything evil is coming to surface. And every good is wiping the evil from the earth. So if we pray, if we pray, study, read the inspirational messages, we will be better off. There's no doubt about it. So you and I are being invited to this journey of being this community of the good. All right. Let us begin this moment with a message. Since we're talking about our anxieties to see the new world. Everybody wants to see the new. I'm not going to say everybody really, but many people do. Some people just want the same old. But many of us are dreaming of the new, the better new. So Paloma is going to read for us the message as we say hi to our friends. Hello, Rihanna. Hello, So. How are you? Yes, also the, the cleaning is happening. Let's help out. Take your brush, your brooms, your wipes, and let's start it. Right, right, Paloma? That's right. <laughs> and um, we're going to read a message from the book, Our Daily Bread. Chapter 8, and um, what a fitting um, reading for this time. It's called Anxieties. And it starts by saying, Casting all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. Peter 5, 7. Anxieties trigger many crimes, and they never construct anything useful on the earth. Invariably, Hasty persons have all the odds stacked against them. In contrast to tormenting anxieties, nature's lessons on patience speak to every sector of the human pathway. If people were born to be anxious, it would be the same as saying that they have come into the world not as laborers to fulfill a sanctifying task, but as unredeemable souls in despair. If people would reflect more judiciously, they would recognize the opportunities for service that the moments of each day have to offer, and they would know how to look after their own endowments. Of course, the scenery changes constantly, compelling us to confront unpleasant surprises as a result of our inappropriate attitude toward happiness or pain. However, our obligation to progress daily toward the good is an essential imperative of the law. Anxiety tries to assail generous hearts because earth's pathways hold many dark corners and many problems that are hard to solve. That being the case, let us remember Peter's prescription. Cast your anxieties about your hopes on our Heavenly Father, for the divine love desires well-being for all of us. It is right to strongly desire the victory of the light, to persevere in the search for peace, to discipline ourselves for the union with the higher realms, and to persist in attuning ourselves to the highest fears. But do not forget that anxiety always precedes the fall. Mamma mia. Ay, ay, ay. We better take care of our anxieties or else. Right, friends. So let us pray 
Welcoming everyone. Hello, Nora Brasil. Thank you for joining us for the work you've been doing. We'll soon connect for sure, friend. Let us breathe in deeply and out slowly. Feeling the loving vibrations that come from above. Dear Master Jesus, you have taught us to gather together and pray to the Almighty Father. In the simplicity of this meeting, we look forward to learning the new. We also seek the therapy that we need to calm our anxieties, transforming them in strength to do the good. Who are we to await transformation without working for it? Who are we to demand transformation from anyone without working on our own? Thank you for showing this to us, for shedding light onto these obscurities of our souls. As we feel the presence of your messengers, we feel your loving and welcoming embrace, we pray. This morning, especially to those who know much, about your gospel, about spiritism, and not only do very little, but corrupt what is so sacred. We feel compassion towards all of them, especially institutions, who label themselves as spiritists and feel entitled to changes adulterations that are truly criminal. We pray for the need to change. We pray that they feel your presence and humble all of us, humble ourselves before the designs of God. May we stay under your guidance, feeling your protection as you grant us the permission to begin one more online gospel. And so be it. All right, so as you know, this is a, the format of a meeting you can do at home. We should do this at least minimum once a week. This is minimum. Because ideally, every day is best. Because we cannot afford spending time without prayer. For those who doubt about it, there was a phenomenal medium of physical effects named Pichotinho in Brazil, who was considered by Chico Xavier the best medium of physical effects he has ever seen. He had ever seen. Pichotinho once he would materialize spirits and high spirits. And if you go to Brazil, for example, in Rio de Janeiro, in a spirit center named André Luiz, in the neighborhood of Tijuca, they still have a, um, what is that, wax? Yeah, some kind of wax. Right? Yeah. yeah. That were materializations done at his time that still stand there. You can see it's in their little museum. So, and, and we have all the witnesses, the signatures and everything. It's a historical thing, pictures of it. So we're saying that Pichotinho, at critical times, he got his family together three times a day to do the prayer. Three times a day, including his children. 
Because when we are in the battle of good and evil, we cannot afford not being protected. And prayer is true protection. Many people write to us saying, oh my gosh, my life is a mess. What do I do? Pray more. Study more. Pray more. Study more. And watch your thoughts and feelings substituting for good thoughts and good feelings. Right, John the Rosa? Thank you for joining us. So talking about this battle that is inevitable because we're still on earth. Let us read the in the Jesus in the home by Neil Lucio Toshiko Xavier, this chapter 40, The Deadly Adversary. We're going to read Carlos and I, Luciana and Paloma, just a sentence or two throughout. That's something you can do at home if you have somebody with you. Because if somebody only, one person reads, maybe it's not very dynamic. But if each one of us read a little bit, it feels like we're all engaged. We're all paying attention. The Deadly Adversary, Chapter 40 of the book, Jesus in the Home, by Neil Lucio through Chico Xavier. That's how it begins. During the course of the evening, refreshed by caressing breezes, Philip, with his callous hands, spoke so emotionally and bitterly about the angst that filled his soul that heart-trending notes of pain gripped the gathering. And after being asked respectfully by Peter that they return to the problem of temptation, the master began the following story. The Lord, our Father, needed a small group of servants in a rebellious and uh, dissolute city. And to that end, he found in the middle of it a family of five, father, mother, and three children, who also loved him and honored his wise and just laws. Once they were situated, the happy collaborators began to serve him uh, him wholeheartedly. They founded an active center of charity in transforming faith that proved its worth as an important sower of heavenly life. And it stood out so much in its devotion and practice of goodness that the spirit of the darkness began to wage a tenacious war against it. To begin with, it flailed it with the bats of slander, but the sincere servants united in tolerance and triumphed. Immediately, uh, immediately thereafter, he spread the gloom of poverty around them, but the dedicated worker workers joined together in an incessant work and overcame the hardship. Then he tormented them with the uh, spurts of scandal. However, the unknown heroes responded with constructive, constructive silence and defeat the dark persecutor. I after, after, oh, sorry, sorry. After other similar sieges, Satan changed his plan of attack and sent them the demons of vanity, which clothed the Lord's faithful servants with great social status as if they had reached the pinnacles of power in the blink of an eye. Nonetheless, the provident workers were even more humble and attributed all the glory bestowed on them to the Heavenly Father. Next, contemptuous and wicked beings fill their center with valuable assets and money in order to benumb their ability to work. But strong in trust and prayer, the loving group received the money and gifts and passed them on to others to the benefit of downtrodden and afflicted. Exasperated, the spirit of darkness sent them the demon of depression who ever so sub subtly uh, reached the mind of the head of the heroic family and said to him solemnly, You are a man, not an angel. 
So aren't you ashamed of yourself for constantly taking, talking about the Lord when you know your own imperfection so well? More than everything else, try to feel the extent of your weakness of the flesh. Weep out your shortcoming. Do penitence before the eternal one. Grieve your sins, your sins. Minding this warning, the unfortunate man became alarmed and forgot that people can only be useful to the grandeur of the Father through their work in carrying out the will of heaven and succumbing to profound depression, he believed himself to be irredeemably blameworthy and sinful forever. From the moment in which he believed he was incapable of getting back on his feet, he refused to eat. He lay down and died from sorrow in just a few days. Seeing him die under a wave of sorrows and tears, his wife followed in his steps. Overcome by unspeakable anguish, and within a few weeks, the children took the same pathway. And so the deadly adversary overcame the valiant uh, collaborators of faith in love one by one, without needing any other weapon than the little suggestion of sadness. The Lord became, became, remained silent for quite a while, but none of those present dare make a comment. Thus, perceiving that his disciples preferred to remain silent, the divine friend concluded expressively. As long as people have the resources to work and serve with their hands and feet and with their sentiments and intelligence, the destructive sadness surrounding them is nothing more than a threatening visit from the spirit of darkness in his wretched and persistent battle against the light. Friends, 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 you know, people nowadays indulge in sadness, melancholy. You're like, oh, I'm so sad. And they allow it to take place. Jesus is saying, as long as we have hands and feet and resources to work in our intelligence, we can't allow the destructive sadness to take place. So the main question for us today is this. Do we recognize this destructive sadness all around? All around? You know, many people, they say, oh, but my life has been uh, a sequence of frustrations cease and then they start telling the unfortunate events this happened when i was three and then when i was five then when i was 10 and then when i'm 20 and then at 40 and then and now i'm here and life is so sad no we are choosing to see the glass half empty what about the many blessings that happen to us we're not orphans of God, no. So this shows how ungrateful we are. When we allow sadness to take place, we're being selfishly ungrateful, if that exists. Because when we are ungrateful, we're selfish. When we are selfish, we're being ungrateful because God wants us to co-create, to pass on the goods. Right, Paloma and Luciana? So this, this is so common nowadays. We see this pattern everywhere. People feeling entitled to this destructive sadness. Oh, I, I don't stand up from bed because I feel pain. But do you did you go to the doctor? Yes. Oh, they don't know what it is. So you know what it is, right? Rust. Because we're not using our muscles. We need to stand up and go. What about the people who are suffering? How can we indulge in the comfort of our homes doing nothing while many people are in the streets lacking minimum resources, including the United States? 
This past week, we saw a homeless near here where we live. And he didn't look good at all. And you may ask, but Vanessa, there's any homeless? No, I find some homeless that look good. But this one didn't look good at all. You could see that he was deeply, deeply troubled. And then so troubled that I got a gift card that Virginia and I was going to give to them, to him, of a, of a coffee shop nearby. And he looked and said, I don't like this one. Then we could measure <laughs> how this destructive sadness is taking him over, eating him up. I mean, somebody wants to give you, if somebody wants to give me that gift card, I would receive it. But that was a gift card for him. And then I looked at him and I said, you know how much money we have put in here for you? It's not $5. It's five times 10. And then he said, oh, are you sure you don't like anything in this, in this place? Oh, I'll consider it. But then, as I mentioned to Virginia, we don't give a gift card without writing a message. So we wrote a message, a spiritual message, and we put our names. When he read it, he smiled and said, thank you. May God bless you too. Why we're saying this? Because sometimes we are in our homes and we feel like, what can we do? Very little. A gift card, it's not much. But then we, we look at this person. The gift card is an excuse to take him out of that destructive sadness. So destructive that when he's receiving something, he doesn't want to receive it. Because he wants something else. But we say, come on. This is not a little gift. There's more to it. And finally, the sun shines in his heart. He sees the light that we are not there just to throw something at him. Because many people donate like this. I don't use this. And then that's why many of them feel hurt. Because it's just the remaining of what we don't use. But in this case, no, this is customized for you. The gift card is an excuse. That destructive sadness in that man's heart is in many of our hearts. Life is daily giving us gifts and we're turning them down. So what are the gifts of God that are being offered to us daily that we're turning down? Right, Paolo and Luciano. And as everything is an opportunity, even in the suffering, right, that we, instead of taking as a complaint and complain about it, we should look on this as an opportunity to see how we can grow because especially in the work environment, people are like, I'm overloaded, I'm working too much, and this and that. But like, what is the opportunity that you can see in this and produce and help more? So, yes, daily we need to start counting our blessings. And unfortunately, even the Spirit's messages come to us that because of how our human nature we only remember about the dramatic and sad things. So this is still like registered in our spirit, in our soul. We still only focus on the sad, but we need to work on it and turn around and see the blessings in everything. Yes. See the blessings, Luciana. That's this, is it? Right, Paloma. Yeah, and um, in the United States, we are so privileged and we really have and, and depending where we live in you know the city counties um we have to pay attention to really find but if we say oh i don't see people suffering 
we are not really looking forward for it. And Vanessa, you were saying the story about the homeless. Um, we saw a whole family in front of Target and people were just walking in and out, in and out. And the first reaction that came to mind was like, they were playing instruments. I said, are they really playing? Maybe they're faking it. That was my first thought. Imagine that that is the deadly adversary coming to us and putting thoughts in our minds so we don't help. And then I thought, you know what? Even if they're faking, who cares? Their whole family is here. Would I do that if my family was going through situations that daring? That would, I would put my five kids. I don't have five kids, but this family was five kids, a baby in the in the their little uh, basket. Yeah. Would I do that? I don't know. So who am I to judge them? Many people in and out of Target spending money inside. And this is a family outside. But the deadly adversary tries to tell us, don't help. This and that whispering in our ears. And we have to really pay attention. That's what Jesus is saying. Focus on the people that are suffering. Work and serve with everything we have. And if it's not money, it's something else. It's writing a message, it's donating our time and not donating with that feeling of pity. Oh, you know, it's not pity, it's compassion. It's different, compassion towards others, compassion towards, you know, their suffering. Who are we to judge? We're nobody. And one day, most likely, we are going to need somebody's compassion. Exactly. Compassion. Friends, hello, Fernanda. Big hug to you. Silvio Otero, we have here. Carol Correa, big hug to you. And Rihanna. Rihanna is saying to us that this message, that this week the mentor's message to us was, if you feel the unsettling feeling of discomfort, Pray and say thank you, Master, but it is in the knowledge of your discomfort that the lesson is learned. Wow, that is deep. Thank you, Rihanna, and beautiful South Africa for being here with us. And we have Saul Souza from Connecticut saying, here in Connecticut, I always see men stopped at the light sign um, asking for money. One day I gave all the money I had to one, and he was on drugs, and he was very aggressive, almost broke my hands. How can we help them without getting hurt? Ouch. That's a big, huge question. You know. Let's say this way. When Jesus came, we need to talk about the model. Because I'm not a model. The guide in the model is only one. Jesus. He came from, and let's say, quote, unquote, heaven, right? He came. And he gave it all. And he got hurt, so. Physically, yes. Spiritually, no. So our guide and model is saying, help, help, and help. Telling the truth sometimes will help and be hurt but just in the external side of us. It's almost impossible to work on the light and not be scratched a tiny bit. Read the book, Paul and Stephen. Sometimes we won't be hurt by the people we help, but by those who think apparently like us, and they're the ones who hurt us, like the Pharisees. In spiritism, we see the same. Sometimes the people we help don't hurt us. But who hurt us? Sometimes people who call themselves spiritists as well. So to tell the truth, if the master of all masters said that to do the good, we will undergo the same, why are we not to, to undergo the same? That doesn't mean we shouldn't have a plan or be prepared 
for example, if you go to dangerous neighborhoods, we have to be very careful. Remember in Baltimore, when we were living in Baltimore, it's there are very dangerous areas there of drug dealers close to the University of Maryland. And whenever we had to go there, for example, the Spirit Side of Baltimore, we were coordinating efforts at a Hope Shelter, a shelter that was in the middle of West Baltimore, very dangerous. But we would go there with the consent of the shelter. We would bring the breakfast that they allowed us to bring in, and we would go through in a caravan of several cars, not alone. Few times I went there by myself just to assess or talk to the directors, but most often with a group. And when we got there, we parked safely. And once we were inside, we felt somewhat safe. Somewhat, we say, because we knew the people who were there were in critical condition. They were not at their best. So we knew we were taking risks. Thank God nothing happened. But these risks are inevitable. When we're giving some money like you did to a homeless, sometimes we forget the mask, but we need to put a mask. If they don't have a mask, we can give them a mask. If they don't want the mask, we use the mask. It's not only about that type of hurt, but especially during the pandemic, making sure that we are safely helping others to continue doing this frequently, right? Debbie, Debbie Grabowski, thank you for being with us. A big hug to you. She's saying about her husband in the obsession. And, uh, you know, we are here. We'll pray, Debbie, if you want, send a name to cardiacradio.com. We went to the book of prayers every Monday when we do the online spiritual care. And later in the Spiritist Center in Virginia, our group prays and does the spiritual treatment at a distance. Count on us, cardiacradio at gmail.com. Okay? And one tip here. It's hard when you're around people who are depressed because they are not alone. What do we do, Debbie? What do we do? We need to find our strength and love them. Even if we can't, but God can. Remember of the power of prayer. We're together praying and we're going to succeed. Right, Luciana. I know you, Luciana, you came from a town in Brazil, Tambaú, who had a phenomenal healing medium. And he uh, he was canonized by the by the Pope, right? Luciana. Yeah. You, you, you want to talk a little bit about him so people know a little bit about the power of prayers and the many healings that happen through the prayer? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh it, it cut a little bit when you're saying, uh, but prayer is so powerful. We study in the Friday talk about prayer, and it is so important for us to be making this connection, be making this prayer, because when we pray, first of all, we elevate ourselves from this vibration that we are right now. So when we're making this effort to pray, we are really getting out of this stuck zone that we are and going into higher levels. So we are making this effort to make this connection with higher spirit, like mentors. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's like a domino effect that is keep going up higher and higher and higher. So the more fervent is our prayer, the more higher levels we can get. And it's coming like, like the condensation of water, right? We're praying here and everything is floating up in the sky. And when it's reaching to a point, this blessing of showers come and fall on, not only to the person that we are praying, but for to all that is in need. It's so beautiful and it's so important for us to make this effort because we'll be helping not only this person 
or the other person, but the whole humanity. So is that recycle the cycle of praying? And oh, Luciana, we, we, I'm trying to recall here the name. It just gave Padre Donizetti. Padre Donizetti. Yes. Yeah, we want to tell people. Oh, okay. In the town of Tambaú in Brazil. Okay. The priest Donizetti was recently canonized by Pope Francis. He, he is in this process. So mm -hmm. now he is considered, he is one step to become a saint in Brazil. So he. He, he used to live, he's from Minas Gerais, Cássia is the name of the town, and he moved, right, from, from one place to the other while he was studying to become a priest. And then he ended up going to this small town in Tambaú, where I'm from, and right there, he was so humble. He comes from like a family with a lot of money, but he gave up everything to live a simple life and be serving, working with Jesus. And he, he, he used to pray. He used to have like this big mass. People were coming from all over Brazil, even from other countries. They will come to Brazil and go to, to Tambaú to receive this grace because for some reason, the way he was praying, he was healing people that was not able to walk. They will go there and through our, his blessings, like the passes that we have, he used to say a blessings and people were start walking. People that had like defected legs, the leg will straight up. And people that were like very, very in bad conditions. Because remember in the past, there was so many disease that today we may be able to treat. But like there were so many disease, so many defection in your body that you couldn't help not even the doctor science could not do anything uh, and still today uh, and he was able to help and uh, God like help and, and cure so many people and the last one that happened I guess five years ago while he was in this process to become a saint he healed this boy that he had this his feet was crooked and he was trying to make it straight and all the stuff doing through surgery and they said well it's not gonna work but the mother believed so much and she prayed so much and she went to Tambaú and had the, the water put it on his feet and sure enough he he, he was cured and now he is able to walk in and and is a normal person so is the faith, you know, that you need to have and in this connection with God. Of course, through spiritism, we know we don't need, like, right, to have this intermediary, but, like, if you believe and if you pray, and, like, we pray for Mother Mary to have this content, we are already boosting ourselves to, to become uh, making this higher connection with higher beings, higher mentors, higher people that are here. Exactly. So it's all about faith. Now let's go back before we wrap up to recognize the strategies of evil, okay? Because Jesus, not by chance, is telling us the strategies. The evil forces, they want to crush the good by doing what? Creating slander. And it's fake news. Like nowadays, when people come and talk bad about the Mother Teresa, for God's sakes, please stop it. Or talk about bad about Chico Xavier. I mean, please, please, if you have nothing to do, refrain from talking ill about people who do good or did good, okay? It's ugly. It's ugly to say the least, but it's truly evil when we talk bad about people who are doing the good. If people are doing bad things, review. And that's the problem. People create fake news about good people and about bad people. They are afraid of revealing evil. This is how our planet is still in need of healing and slander. So what is the attitude to um protect us from slander tolerance always 
don't refrain. Oh, but people are talking bad about me. Let them bark, let them bark like dogs. They bark, they bark, they bark, they bark. Okay, so what? Dogs bark, they are not going to stop barking. People who like to talk bad about people, they're going to talk bad. So what? We keep doing the good. Okay? And then next, next, the gloom of poverty. So it's like financial hardships will happen. And God is going to allow to test us. And then what do we do? Work incessantly without complaining. Okay, God, you want us to work more? We'll sell cakes, cheese bread, whatever you need. <laughs> We're going to clean. We're going to do whatever we need. And with honor, because we can work, because there are many people who want to work and they can't. They're stuck to a bed. They're on a wheelchair. They would love to clean a home. And we can do it and we complain. Oh, I don't like doing laundry. Think of the people who don't have hands or have hands they cannot move. Say thank you, hands, for picking up the clothes, putting inside and being used. Thank you, feet, for being able to walk. And then they bring scandal. The serpent of scandal. Yeah, people who like to review things. And you see this in politics every day. People are doing the good, and then they found something way back when related to a relative or family member. They start bringing that about. What do you do? Constructive silence. What is constructive silence? It's not this passive silence. Oh, I'll be quiet and alone. No, you'll be working, but without you don't need to defend yourself. That's what Emmanuel always said to Chico. You don't need to defend yourself. Defending an idea is good. Defending ourselves, not needed. And then the plan of attack changed. Satan changed the plan of attack and sent the demons of vanity. And this is tricky. Most often we fail because people start saying, Oh, you're so great. You're doing amazing work. And we start believing it's us. And that's the funny part of it. And we'll share something with you just to show how interesting it is. For many years, we've been doing the 11 p.m. program. We stopped for a few months because of so many impediments. But we're doing the morning prayer anyhow. And then I remember... One day I said to Mentor Joe, I'm going to pre-record the 11 p.m. program. Is that okay? He says, try it. And I tried to do the program at other times. Every time I sat down to record it, it wouldn't flow. And I was asking, what's happening? He smiled and said, Bernice, and you think you're doing this by yourself? No, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm not. But now you're feeling you're not. Because when it's me alone, I can't make it. Yeah, it's different. There is that magic. And I say magic, figuratively speaking. Because when we are doing things in synchronicity with the higher realms, it's so beautiful that it sounds, but it's not me. So if people start saying, oh, Vanessa, it's so beautiful. You are wonderful. Oh, if I believe it, I'll be in trouble. Don't believe it. What did these workers do? They said, these are things that came from God. So that's a trick. Vanity is very deceiving. And then later, they brought more financial resources. A lot of money. And we see this happening with many spiritist organizations. And many fail. They start receiving a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot of money. And then derail in churches, organizations all around, nonprofit organizations. What did this group do? What Chico Xavier did. 
Every asset that came, he passed it on. And we here in Virginia have a letter from Chico Xavier to Haddad when he explains very thoroughly when he received a large donation and he attached a copy of the very land, a huge acres, I think probably 70 acres of a farm in Brazil, donated to him. Back then, Chico Xavier was affiliated with the Spirit Center in Uberaba, the city of Uberaba. Some of the directors wanted to sell the land and build a bigger Spirit Center because thousands of people used to come to Chico Xavier's to see Chico Xavier. Emmanuel said no. Chico Xavier said, no, 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 we're not going to use for this. We're going to use to help people. And there was a little bit of a conflict there. You know what Chico Xavier do? He writes in the letter. He gives the living proof of it. He said, I'm out of the center. He left the center and opened another center. Tinier, even tinier. And he gave half of this to that center, say, okay, you want it? Fine. The other half he donated to a Catholic organization. Chico Xavier never kept anything, not even the copyrights of the books. He kept nothing to himself. So this is a lesson for us as well. And then the spirits of darkness sent the demon of depression. It's a demon. And to heal it, Debbie and friends, we need to change that inner voice that says, who are you? You're so ashamed of yourself. Weep your shortcomings. No, I'm not going to weep my shortcomings. I'm going to change them. Because weep my shortcomings doesn't solve the problem. And here he says that this demon really ate the men up and the whole family. When I hear that voice saying, Vanessa, who are you? I say, I'm a child of God. But do you think you were so good? I think I'm progressing. That's my dialogue. That should be our dialogue. Is it easy? No. No. It's hard. But we need to move forward. Right? And we have here Rihanna saying the silence. Prayer like Jesus, in the science prayer of Jesus, God forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing exactly. Mm -hmm. And John the Rosa, we first should recognize them through words and our expressions and feel compassion with them. And if we can give money or food, then we can always pray for them when we encounter them and then keep them in our daily prayers. Beautiful. Thank you. And Carol is saying, through Cardiac Radio, Chico Xavier is a living example of selfish, selflessness, for sure. Right, Carlos? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say anything else? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it's all said there, so. I want to ask Carlos just to read Jesus' words in the last paragraph, because this needs to keep ringing in our minds as the major advice today. What we say, right, Paloma, Luciano, and Carlos, and I, it's like, doesn't matter much, but what Jesus says matters, matters. Please read it for us, this last paragraph, Carlos. As long as people have the resources to work and serve with their hands and feet and with their sentiments and intelligence, the destructive sadness surrounding them is nothing more than a threatening visit from the spirit of darkness in the wretched, wretched and persistent battle against the light. See what Jesus says, wretched and persistent. So if we think, oh, we've been doing these good works for 20 years, rest assured. We will discarnate in this battle. We'll fight the battle in the afterlife. 
when we reincarnate for lives to come. So consider this persistent battle against evil is a constant. We need to teach our children every day, every day saying, God loves you, but ignorance exists. Inexperience exists, and that's what evil is all about. And it comes from all sides, incarnates and discarnates. So we have to be very attentive to recognize when it shows up and not give in. Right? Paloma and Luciana, your final comment before we march towards our passes prayer. Um, we, we, I just want to highlight right at the beginning where he said that this family was an active center of charity and transforming faith. And the key word for us is active. And that's where Jesus also finishes to say, to persist in the battle, you have to work the, res the res have the resources to work and serve with their hands and feet, which is a active action. It is, we can't just sit here, it's beautiful, we're studying, we're reflecting, but this is not sufficient. It's gonna require action. It starts with it and it ends with it. So big message for us to, to change and move. Yeah, you're right, Luciana. I was just uh, saying that we need to be humble, right? And know that this is a key to be like hum uh, humble in working our um, depression because when we hear those voice, we need to humble ourselves. And like you mentioned, we are children of God and we are being supported every time, any, every second of the day we have in this support, but we need to humble ourselves and march on and, and be active. Like Paloma just recall us, we need to be active because a lot of times we just want to call for blessings to come and don't do anything, and this is not how it works. Right, friends. So right now, everyone who is joining us, let us form a healing current, because healing is everywhere. The other day, walking, just walking in nature, we were mentioned to our daughter, breathe in because this, this air has healing molecules. Kardec explains to us, that God is always releasing the healing, but we need to learn to absorb it consciously. So let us breathe in the healing, because healing is not somewhere out there in a special place. It's everywhere. Healthy molecules. We just need to attract it. So let us together form this current of healing. Forming this healing current to support others in their healing as well, including the discarnate spirits who need a lot of help as well. And let us follow very religiously, very um, with our the best of our intentions and of our hearts, the prayer passes that Luciana is going to lead. So let us close our eyes, breathing in and out. Absorbing the loving and care of our Creator, Master Jesus, the vibrations that the doctors and nurses are providing to us to help us heal our soul, our body, in these moments of treatment, of nourishing the soul and the physical body. As we come here humbly to receive these blessings, let us visualize Master Jesus with his, with his arms, spread open 
ready to embrace us in a hug. As he opened his arm, we can see the lights, this healing vibration already permeating our body. We can feel the difference, the love. And as we come closer and closer to our Master Jesus, we feel lighter, we feel that we are cared. Master Jesus is showing us the way to progress, the way to be co-creator with our dear God. He assure us that everything that it comes to us are blessings and opportunities to help us in this reincarnation and in the other lives to come. So as we are hugged and immersed in his love, we feel that we are one with him. And our light shines just as much as his. And as we have this experience of pure love, we are able to share and think about all our brothers and sisters in humanity. And these blessings is also reaching them in this moment in time. We are all receiving the remedies and energies necessary for us in this moment in time. And as we continue envelop into Master Jesus' arms, together we pray. Pray for all our brothers and sisters in need especially those that don't know about our Creator, don't know about the Gospel, and are starving, this starving food for their souls. May, dear Father, they receive your blessings and give us the strength to continue to work that one day they also can have this bread, this living water that is your gospel. We also like to pray for all our brothers and sisters that are ill in hospitals, nursing homes, jail, in their house, we pray so that they receive healing treatments. We also would like to pray for all parents and families. May they continue working hard in their mission of bringing up this new generation that will make the change in this planet. We pray for all little ones that are reincarnating or they're already incarnating in this planet. 
and they will make the difference. May they be able to fulfill their mission with the guidance of the parents and educators that will come across their lives. And we would like to be grateful and very thankful for the opportunity of being here with the mentors, with our guardian angels, with everything that fall into place for us to be here together, praying, learning, nourishing our souls so that we can share this good news with the world and with everyone in need that come across in our life. And with the permission of the mentors, doctors and nurses, Master Jesus, dear God, we would like to ask permission to close this beautiful prayerful moment of today. And so be it. We can hear you. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Luciana. Thank you, Paloma. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Thank you. friends. So let's stay hopeful and active, right? Active in the good. And if the demon of depression comes by, we pray for the demon of heaven. Knowing that it's not an entity. It's actually the old condition is inside of us. That open doors to entities who don't want the good to come true in all of our lives. Friends, we are blessed for receiving this gift of this message by Neil Lucio through Chico Chave in the book Jesus in the Home, chapter 40. We're more... We're stronger now than an hour ago. Thank you, Rihanna, Sol Souza, Nora Brazil, John De Rosa, Debbie, and friends. If you have any question, don't hesitate to ask us at cardicradio at gmail.com. And until next time, bye-bye.